is it possible to squeeze an audio and video production studio into six square meters? Well, I've managed to do that. And if I can do it, you can do it too. I'm not promoting building tiny studios, but if that's all the space you have and there's no other options, may this video give you some inspiration. Before we begin, I want to thank Gravity and Adam Hall not only for sponsoring this video, but also for making my life easier when I was trying to make this space as functional as possible. The process of recording audio, producing songs, recording guitars and vocals, usually requires a couple of things. First of all, a room, acoustically treated room in the best case scenario, a computer, an audio interface, mics if you want to record vocals, some guitar gear if you want to record guitars like guitar amps and pedals, and finally monitors to hear what you're doing. Video production on the other hand requires audio and all of the above, and additionally cameras, light and space. There isn't much space here, but everything else is present. If you've ever watched my videos, then you know that this is what you usually see. But let me zoom out a bit and show you around. So yeah, there are a few more things here. Guitars, one more chair for another optional person, or sometimes I put boxes here or pedals. Guitars, more guitars. When I play guitar on camera, I usually lift the chair. Its right handle is removed, its left handle can go like so, so it gets pretty comfy, and I can play any guitar without hitting the chair. This thing also goes up and down, and I can use it to display something. Something like a pedal or a box with a pedal. I usually use one to two cameras at a time, sometimes three, but I do have four of them installed and ready to go at any moment. This is obviously my main camera. I call it a front cam. My second most important camera is the table camera, and this is where you usually see a product. But if I zoom out, you'll see more of my table. Here I have my keyboard and mouse. Stream Deck to control audio, video and light, and two pedal boards. This one is wired before the signal goes to guitar amps. After guitar amps it comes back here for delays and reverbs. I usually have more pedals here, but now everything else is packed and ready to move to a bigger place. More on that in some other video. This camera can give me a close-up on the product or on to any of the pedal boards. I can also shift it a bit like so, and show you the rest of my table. This is the audio emission control. Here's the main volume, three different inputs that I can activate or deactivate. Uh, input one is my main audio interface, the digital mixer. Input two is uh, Evo 4. And input three is an auxiliary input, which is right here, which I can connect to a check stomp or something else if I need to. Three outputs, because I have three monitoring lines, I'm usually using my Genelex, so it's on the output two most of the time. Outputs one and three I'm using when I'm mixing or controlling the end result. I have smaller pair of monitors on the one and a bigger on the three. Here I have a beautiful mix of picks, screws and uh, some other random things. Here is the clock, which is very important when I'm streaming. Here between the first and the second floor I have a few more things. Even tight power max to power all the pedals. Here's another auxiliary stereo input which goes right into the main audio interface. Here's a power strip that takes US and UK plugs, European as well also has USB outputs. On the other side I have another one with individual oops, switches per outlet. On the right side I have a loop selector. When it's enabled the sound goes through this pedal board and if it's disabled the sound goes right into the amps. Here I have a USB splitter with individual switches again uh, to turn on and off uh, different things like Stream Deck or Evo 4. Now if I turn this camera you will see a bit more. Another power strip here, as you can see, I like those with individual switches. This one is for the audio, so I have Power Max, my main audio interface, uh, Monicon, which is Palmer Monicon, the audio emission control, uh, the bigger monitors, my regular monitors, and smaller monitors. This kind of thing is very handy for devices that don't have power switches or if they're placed inconveniently. 
I have everything in one place and can turn anything on or off. Here I have some space for random things like musical score that I played uh, some time ago and uh, just wanted to go through it again. And here are my monitors, standard, big and small. Here on the top I used to have IQ Multimedia XIO, which is now also packed and ready to move. Moving on! Here on the other side of the table I have another power strip for symmetry, and this one is responsible for amps. I have bigger amps and capture on the first switch, Black Spirit 200 on the other switch, and a mini amps on the third switch. These two are still empty and waiting for some more amps to come. Here again some uh, space for random stuff and monitors. Another camera that you sometimes get to see is the amps camera right here, which is mounted on the same slider as the table camera that can move left and right. And from here you can also see uh, the whole table. The table is somewhat functional, it has drawers everywhere. I have patch cables and some other stuff. There's another drawer with more things. Peaks. Pedals. more pedals and even more pedals and again another power strip for uh, quickly plugging some other random things and here's a foot switch that is connected to the amp switcher and on the other side here is the Audient Evo 4 which I use when I don't need the big mixer which is right below right here another drawer, drinks of course, <laughs> another drawer with uh, usually some computer related stuff, now empty, and uh, some rarely used pedals and stuff. Right in front of me I have an LED light and the front camera which is fixed to the bottom of the first shelf with amps. I have three shelves with amps, bigger amps are here on the right, smaller are on the left, and over there I usually have boxes and stuff I rarely use. This is the amp switcher, the sound from the loop selector on my table comes here, then it is routed to all the amps, and when it returns it goes into Capture X, which is connected to my audio interface. If from here I go to the right, you'll see a soft box, a spotlight, and there's another par light right there for the guitar. And on the other side, I have two more spots here, and over there, one more par light, that's for my face, one more soft box for the table, another light over there, which is usually uh, here next to the window, and, uh, well, duct tape and some other stuff. Here I have the light control center. This is the light I use when I'm not filming, it's pretty weak. These are the soft boxes, it's gonna be really dark without them. And, uh, well, this is gonna be the front LED over there. And these two are for pars and spots. This whole construction above me is mounted to the wall with an arm and a piece of wood on the left. And on the other side everything is fixed onto a gravity vary pole uh, that goes all the way from the floor to the ceiling. And here's by the way my fourth camera that I sometimes use for different non-standard angles. And my mic, very important. I sometimes have another mic mounted onto this flexible gravity arm right here, but now it's also packed and waiting to be moved to a new place. Behind my chair I have two more lights and of course another power strip. This one controls power lights on the floor and one more support and another light on that wall. To my left, guitars. And here I've got some tools I often need. Screwdrivers, pliers, Allen wrenches and a flashlight. Here behind guitars I have some acoustic treatment to keep sound reflections as low as possible. To my right, more guitars, I would usually reach for the nearest one. Under the table I have my computer and over there there is that digital mixer, uh, which is my primary audio interface I was talking about before. To the right from my desk there is a storage, uh, more storage, you can see my synth on the floor, a 3D printer right under the ceiling, another amp, uh, printer, some more pedals, uh, cable boxes and some more acoustic treatment. In the opposite corner I have another gravity vary pole with two more lights mounted on the top. And of course it's all connected and I can control everything from the stream deck. So here's my front camera, here's my table camera, here are both at the same time, here are amps, a uh, few more different views, pedal view, whatever. 
What is this? Oh yeah, amps and uh, myself have dust top capture. I've got mutes for the microphone. Me now you can hear me. A few more inputs. Another microphone, amps, an audio loop back, which I usually don't use. Maintenance, if I need to go on a break. The lights, you can see them switching right behind me. As well as the headlight, which I can turn on and off. And guitar light. Oh, and I have another one for the mic, uh, which I'm not using right now. Second page here with some more stuff, if I suddenly need them, but they don't work. Oh, they do. Nice. And here's my title I usually use for used for uh, streams on my secondary channel. And of course, the red button to start and stop the recording. Another useful feature is right behind me. It's not a black wall, it's a backdrop that I can remove if I don't need it. I have another one right behind it, uh, the white one. And of course, there is a white wall, which doesn't look very nice at all. But hey, all my first videos were filmed like this. Without the light, though. <laughs> okay, back to normal. Another useful thing that helped me save a lot of space is this gravity wall mount for guitars. Without them, I definitely wouldn't be able to accommodate all my instruments in one room. These are safer than regular wall mounts, because the guitar gets locked in place when you put it back in. I believe the only thing I missed so far is the size of this room, which is 3.5 meters by 1.7 meters, and that is exactly 6 square meters or 64 square feet. So yeah, it is possible to fit an audio and a video studio into 6 square meters. To wrap it all up, next you will see a slow motion video that I've shot one and a half years ago uh, when I put all of this together. Enjoy, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in one of my next videos someday soon.